in this video we'll show you how to build an IoT Shield PCB for the ESP32 and the web server dashboard to control it. The Shield is equipped with a BME 280 sensor, an LDR, a PR motion sensor, a status LED, a push button and a socket to connect a relay module or any other output. You can find all the resources needed to build this project in the links below this video. This project is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is a full-featured printed circuit board manufacturing service. Turn your DIY breadboard circuits into professional PCBs. You can get 10 boards for approximately $5 plus shipping, which will vary depending on your country. This project is divided in two parts. First, designing the IoT Shield, and second, programming the IoT Shield with Arduino IDE. Let's take a look at the features of the shield. The IoT Sensor Shield is designed to be stuck to the ESP32. For this reason, if you want to use our PCB, you need the same ESP32 board. We're using the ESP32 Dev Kit Do It V1 board, the model with 36 GPIOs. If you have another ESP32 module, you can still follow this project by assembling the circuit on a breadboard or modifying the PCB layout and wiring to match your ESP32 board. The shield consists of a BME 280 temperature, humidity and pressure sensor, an LDR, a PR motion sensor, a status onboard LED, a push button and a 3-pin socket that gives you access to ground, 5 volts and the GPI where you can connect any output, like a relay module for example. This is the pin assignment for each component in the IoT Shield. To control the shield, we'll build a web server. However, you can program the sensor shield as you wish with any other web server or to integrate it with the home automation platform. Here's the web server features to control the IoT Shield. To access the web server, you need to log in with username and password. After authenticating with the right credentials, you can access the web server. There's an icon at the top of the web page that you can click to log out. Then you'll need to log in again. There are two toggle switches, one to control the output socket and another for the onboard status LED. The status LED can also be controlled using the physical on shield push button. The state of the LED automatically updates on the web page. The toggle switch for the status LED can be useful to activate or deactivate something on the ESP32. And the LED gives you visual feedback of what's going on. The temperature, humidity and luminosity are displayed on the web server and are automatically updated using server sent events. Finally, there's a card that indicates if motion was detected. After receiving the motion detect notification, you can click the card to clear the warning. These are the main features of the ESP32 IoT dashboard. This is just an example on how you can control your shield. The idea is to modify the code to add your own features to the project. So let's get started. Before designing and building the PCB shield, it's important to test the circuit on a breadboard. If you don't want to make a PCB, you can still follow this project by assembling the circuit on a breadboard. Here's the schematic diagram for this project. After making sure everything is working properly on a breadboard, we can start designing the PCB. To design a PCB, you can use any PCB design tool. If you want to customize this PCB, you need to upload the files provided in the video description to EasyEDA. Designing the circuit works like in any other circuit software tool. You place some components and you wire them together. Then, you assign each component to a footprint. Having the parts assigned, place each component. When you're happy with the layout, make all the connections and route your PCB. Save your project and export the Gerber files. Once you have your Gerber files, you can order the final PCB. If you don't want to modify the PCB, you can go to the project page below and download the Gerber files provided. Then, you can click the first link in the video description to go to the PCBWay website. 
and open the PCB Instant Quote page. PCBWay can grab all the PCB details and automatically fill them for you. Use the quick order PCB autofill parameters. Press the Add Gerber File button to upload the provided Gerber files, and that's it. You can also use the online Gerber viewer to check if your PCB is looking as it should. If you aren't in a hurry, you can use the China Post shipping method to lower your cost significantly. In my opinion, I think they overestimate the China Post shipping time. You can increase your PCB order quantity and change the solder mask color. I've ordered the blue color. Once you're ready, you can order the PCBs by clicking the Save to Cart button and complete your order. After approximately one week using the DHL shipping method, I received the PCBs at my office. Everything comes well packed and the PCBs are really high quality. The letters on the silk screen are really well printed and easy to read. Additionally, the solder sticks easily to the pads. Besides the PCBs, I also received some stickers, a ruler and a pen. The next step is soldering the components to the PCB. I've used an SMD LED and SMD resistors. This can be a bit difficult to solder, but they save a lot of space on the PCB. There's a list of all the components needed and where to buy them in the video description. Start by soldering the SMD components. Then, solder the other pins. And finally, solder the other components. Or you can use other pins if you don't want to connect the components permanently. Here's how the ESP32 IoT shield looks like after assembling all the parts. It should stack perfectly to the ESP32 dev kit do it V1 board. The code for this project runs a web server that allows you to monitor and control the IoT shield. The features of the web server were covered previously. We'll program the ESP32 board using Arduino IDE, so make sure you have the ESP32 board add-on installed. You also need to install the libraries to read from the BME 280 sensor and build the web server. Here's the libraries you need to install. The Adafruit BME 280 library, the Adafruit Unified Sensor Library, the ESP Async Web Server, and finally, the Async TCP Library. Copy the following code to your Arduino ID. This code is quite long to explain. If you want to learn more, visit the project page. If you type your network credentials in these two variables, the code will work straight away. To upload code, go to Tools, Board, and select Do It ESP32 Dev Kit V1 Board. Go to Tools, Port, and select the COM port the ESP32 is connected to. Then, click the Upload button. After a few seconds, you should have the done uploading message. Open the serial monitor at the baud rate of 11.5200. Press the ESP32 Reset button to print the ESP IP address. Open your browser and type the IP address. The following page should load. Insert the username and password to access the web server. By default, the username is admin and the password is admin. You can also change that on the code. Here, you can see the latest sensor readings. The readings are updated every 10 seconds automatically using server sent events. This means that when the ESP32 graphs new readings, it sends an event to the client, your browser. When this event happens, it updates the fields with new readings. You can control the state's LED using the switch or with the shield physical push button. The state is automatically updated on the web page. There's also another toggle button to control an additional output, like a relay module. Finally, there's a card indicating if motion was detected or not. When motion is detected, it shows this message. This message is also updated automatically using server sent events. Once you've seen this notification, you can click the motion card so it clears the warning message. We hope you found this project useful and you're able to build it yourself. You can program the IoT shield with a different code to suit your needs. Remember that if you don't have the PCB, it still works on the breadboard.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the like button. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing and ring the bell for post notifications to catch my next ESP32 projects. Finally, make sure you visit randomnerdtutorials.com for the full step-by-step -step instructions and downloadable code. Just click the link in the video description. That's it for now, and we'll see you in the next video.